All right, welcome back to Divinity Original Sins 2, the guide to review all of the skills and give you a little bit of an insight. We are at the last caster skill, which is Necromancy. Necromancy is different from the other caster skills. And before we dive into the uh, skill itself, I want to mention its uh, passive ability. For every point in, um, in Necromancy, players will get 10% vitality damage. Uh, so that's basically life leech. Here's the thing on paper, it looks stunning. It looks really, really good. And it looks as if you would want to combine it with every melee build because who doesn't like life leech? Well, you know, out of my experience in playing the game, it is not as good as it uh, looks on paper. Number one, you only life leech if the enemy has already lost all of its armor, at which point you are usually better off with uh, other things than just attacking. It is not bad, but it is certainly also not phenomenal. Number two, if you have lost hit points yourself, in the logic uh, of how Divinity Original Sins 2 works, you are already in a pretty poor position. Uh, optimally, you don't even want to lose your armor, uh, your physical or magical armor. What you want to do instead is you want to counter it with regularly uh, replenishing your armor and regularly replenishing your magical armor. And therefore, if you do that uh, proactively, uh, there is really not so much need to regain vitality. On top of it, what makes this ability even a little bit worse, healing skills are really easy to come by. So it is not very difficult to cast a healing or a nice first aid or even uh, the summoning uh, healing, so the infusion onto a target. There are just literally so many ways uh, to heal characters uh, and, their, and their loss of life points that I feel it is um, underwhelming. There are exceptions if you, uh, if you use um, extra attacks, um, like uh, specifically a lot of uh, physical att chain attacks, then it can fill you up completely, but it doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, counter the arguments that I've just given. So for all of you who are thinking about like splicing in necromancy into a melee build, reconsider that. I would rather go with Polymorph, and I will explain in the Polymorph guide why that is the case. Now, Necromancy as a school is a little bit different than the other casting schools. Number one, Necromancy deals physical damage. That's important to understand. Um, that is a huge advantage, but likewisely also a disadvantage. Um, it is a huge advantage if you go with a physical-based party because the character will hit exactly in the same uh, into the same wound than the, uh, that the other characters are currently also hitting in. If you have a uh, mainly physical-based uh, 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 group, then this character build is wonderful. Necromancy in a physical uh, build would uh, always start with two points into necromancy, ten points into warfare to maximize the damage, and then skilling up the uh, necromancy a little bit more so that you can get all of the skills, but you don't really need the passive ability, and the rest then would probably go into scoundrel or huntsman to make sure that you gain uh, the best bang for your buck. So that's the idea of how the build is generally uh, created. Necromancers can be quite sustainable because you will see that uh, it has a lot of defensive skills. Now the big however part, um, ones that you are usually using because you are an int-based character and int-based characters use ones are solely using magical damage. So for the in-between uh, in um, uh, wand activities that you are uh, that you are doing, uh, you would exactly attack a different uh, a different armor class, which means the ones are getting even less useful than they are anyway. So um, in a matter of fact that is a uh, flaw. There are mods out there for physical ones, but we're talking about the non-modded version at, at the moment. You can fix everything with mods. Now, let's take a look at the skills themselves and how is a necromancer probably going to stand out. Necromancer, if you go down that route, uh, would focus on necromancy, but also splash in all of the other little schools for utility uh, purpose, like I uh, said before. Necromancy probably has by far the weakest utility but therefore gains a little bit of self-sustain. Let's start with the defensive skills um, first and foremost. Um, one of the abilities uh, that I can highly, highly recommend is Bone Cage. Bone Cage basically grabs all of the uh, uh, corpses 
uh, in your proximity. And depending on the number of corpses, you get a huge physical armor bonus. That is just great. Combined with uh, certain uh, abilities in, in warfare, where whenever your uh, armor bonus exceeds the armor bonus of the enemy, you can replenish all of its physical armor in one uh, strike. Um, that can synergize quite well. So I would, at the beginning of the game, already use it and I would never stop using it. Secondly, Living on the Edge and Death Wish, uh, which is one of uh, the combinations uh, that a lot of uh, players use in their, in their group. Basically to say the melee character... Uh, can die or would live on the edge for a long period. Living on the edge with a cooldown of five rounds um, allows you a death resistance for two turns. So basically, if you have um, Necromancy 2 on at least two to three characters, you can almost permanently make a character invulnerable from, from dying. Here's uh, the nice additional combination. There is Death Wish again, a character um, who has lost a percentage in vitality gains a significant damage bonus. Now that is nice, but you can already see how this completely dis-synergizes with the uh, passive ability, right? So on paper, this is cool because you can leave your warrior to be death-wished and super low on hit points and then he will deal a shit ton of damage. Yeah, on paper, yes, but that requires uh, other characters to be the necromancer and therefore... Um, uh, the, the character itself, um, li uh, like the living on the edge ability itself, is only valid for, it says your character, so it is personally uh, personally only. So the character, the two-hand uh, fighter in this case, in my example, uh, effectively would um, uh, would have two points in, uh, in necromancy. So let's assume he's at one hit point. After dealing a full barrage of attacks with his 20% life leech, there is a good chance that he actually gained back some hit points. So the problem here is that Death Wish and Living on the Edge effectively kind of heal you back up and therefore then become gradually less and less um, powerful. So it is a nice ability because it can prevent something that other schools cannot prevent. So therefore, great. I will, quite frankly, only go with living on uh, on the edge um, on uh, on a character where you know that he is regularly taking a lot of damage. So bone cage living on the edge, kind of the defensive ones. Now we come to the point where um, where um, we look at the offensive abilities of um, uh, of necromancy, and that's really where uh, necromancy has drawn the short stick. There's one great ability, which is called Mosquito Swarm. Unfortunately, it has four rounds cooldown. It deals decent amounts of damage. We're not talking about tons, but it is nice. And it will set a bleeding effect for many of the creatures once they lost their armor class. And that's about it. Both the Bloodsucker ability, Decaying Touch, and so on and so forth, like all of that is not really working so well. I am not a big fan of Decaying Touch. Nice for a melee character, but certainly not for a dedicated Necromancer. The only thing that is okayish, and I will give uh, uh, I will give that to uh, to necromancy, is the bloated corpse and later the bone widow. Both of these um, are um, summonings. The bloated corpse, in my opinion, is a really really strong summoning, costs only one ability point, but it requires a corpse. So if you kill someone fast enough, you can raise a bloated corpse. Bloated corpses can basically run into enemies and then uh, sacrifice themselves. If you run that combination more often, and if you like it, I would uh, advise you to go with Supercharger, which is a summoning uh, skill, which lets uh, the bloated corpse get 50% uh, increased damage um, at the expense of it dying at the end of the round. But since you anyways want to let it explode, it just deals 50% more damage. Uh, so the combination uh, Supercharger and bloated corpse can be put up for two action points. Really um, all around strong, but again, the setup requires a corpse, so that is not so good. The last ability I'd like to highlight is the Shackles of Pain. Basically, it marks a target, and the target will receive all the damage that you receive, which is okay, and which is also fine for a tank. But yet again, I told you that the AI is often focusing targets that are easy to kill, so my opinion with Shackles of Pain is it looks great on paper, it just plays very, very poorly. Good. 
So that has been the Necromancer. I hope I haven't discouraged you too much. Uh, the Necromancer definitely has its uh, place. I played uh, full dedicated Necromancer in one of my playthroughs, so I can say the build uh, works. But don't expect to be like the minion master uh, um, of many, many undeads. That's simply not what the build is about. Good. We're now going to the neutral skills and uh, go through polymorph and summoning. <laughs> 